let's take a walk with Feast on a journey of blind faith. All right, here we go. Do Christians really understand blind faith? What is blind faith? We talked about it. If you go to church, you heard the term blind faith, right? But what is it? Do we really understand it? Do we actually do it? Are we actually blind in our faith? No, a lot of us are not. So, so, um, all my life I had to fight. (laughs) Seriously. Uh, There have been so many events in my life that have mm, helped me along my journey, that have helped me to get to where I am today. There, that's the best. Like, this hat is just not, like, sitting right. I don't have my eyebrows on right now. It's still cute. But there's a bra showing. It's still cute, though. <laughs> that's what I get for being vain. Trip, trip. Anyway, um, yeah, so... The events that I, the circumstances that have been dealt to me, um, the, the, the events that I've been through, all life, been life in, right? Um, since the day I was, even before I was born, which is crazy. So, yeah, here I am. So let's just get into it. This hat is really annoying me. Y'all just bear with me and bear with my no eyebrows. <laughs> Whatever, what y'all getting? I ain't got no hair in either. And I ain't got no eyebrows on. You wanna see me? But this is me. No eyebrows, no hair, just a hat. But this is what I look like, all right? This is annoying me because my hat's not sitting right. But whatever, this is what the fuck y'all getting. All right, so um, we're gonna start with 2021 and We'll go through all of the events of my life at another time because it's a lot. Um, 2021. 2021, I think we went back into the classroom from being virtual. And I want to say it was April that we had to return to the classroom. I really did not want to go back into the classroom for fear of COVID. I was still scared at that time. Um, and, you know, year went by, whatever, and I get to May, (laughs) April, May, I think we went back April 8th, and then I think around May, maybe the beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June, I just started feeling some kind of way. When I start feeling some kind of way, when my gut is telling me no, it's time to go. So I uh, actually started packing, not packing, throwing 21 years worth of stuff away. Trying to get the classroom ready for the next person that's gonna be coming in. School gets out and then it hits July. Like I knew, I had already told my assistant principal I didn't think that I was going to be coming back. Gave her that heads up. Had to talk with her. Um, July 14th, I think it was. Miss Wayman, she calls me back and she told me that it was in Annapolis. And I was just like, yeah, no. So I was just like, so Miss Wayman, what are my next steps? So she tells me my next steps. She's like, so she's like, you have until today. Yo, it was the day to the day that I had the thing today. She's like, today is your last day to resign without prejudice. I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, you know me, I'm going to get right to work and type up my resignation letter. I sent it to who it needs to go to, blah, blah, blah. So I quit, right? A couple days after that, I want to say four days after that, July, I want to say it was either the 18th or the 21st. So the 18th, 21st, um, I got a call from my mom. I remember where I was too, and it was just like, my heart just broke. We got a call that my Uncle Butch and Aunt Sherry, um, passed away in, and then, bro, my mom just, 
So she lost two of her really close friends, cousins, in one night, right? So it was like, it was like her brain was like, let me protect this woman. I don't know, is it her brain or was it the Holy Spirit grabbing her brain and be like, eh, I'm gonna hold you tight. It's like her brain was trying to protect her. And, and it was, it was crazy. So like I said, I quit July 14th, right? And a couple of days later, my mom just was not my mom. So you see how God works, right? Okay, so me not knowing, me not knowing blind faith, we're talking about blind faith. So me not knowing what's about to happen, I already am a step ahead. I quit my job. I could, there was no way that I could go back into work. So I quit in July, school starts. We have to go back to school in August, basically to start setting up your classroom, um, meetings and stuff like that for school to prepare for the kids, right? So there's no way, there's no way that I would have been able, no way that I would have been able to go back to school, take care of my mom, my sick mom, and be mentally stable. I'm telling you right now, I would have been in an institution, okay? Okay, and I'm, and, and, I hope that that doesn't trigger anybody and I'm not, I'm very serious when I say that. My mental health is everything to me and that's something that I'll talk about more later. So again, blind faith. Did I know that my mom was gonna get sick? No, did I know that Uncle Butch and Aunt Sherry were gonna pass? No, I did not. But I had that gut feeling, intuition, mm, the Holy Spirit, whatever y'all wanna call it. And I paid attention to it. I focused on it and I went with it, right? Just a couple of days before my mom got sick. So she gets sick and I'm able to take care of her. I had to move her into my house to take care of her. Day in, day out, right? So blind faith, <laughs> we're gonna go back there. Look at me preaching and shit. Um, so, yeah, so I quit. Uh, it's August. September, actually, even before September, um, let's rewind a little bit. Uh, and, ooh, that's crazy. Wow. 2011. <laughs> Yo, what is this? <sighs> August 1st, 2011, 10, 10 years, 10 years prior to my mom losing, and I got to get back to that as well, 10 years prior to me having to take care of my mom, um, my brother died by suicide, okay, so with that being said, and I'll get into that another time, like I said, um, my mission has been to start a company to honor his legacy. All right, hey guys. So I recorded this portion of my video already, but I'm recording it again because I wasn't pleased with it. So I started my business in September, 2021. I think I'm saying that correctly. Oh my gosh, the years have gone by so quickly. I might be getting it mixed up, but I don't know. I got notes this time. All right, so um, I started my business in September 2021. Um, remember, my business is in honor of my brother, and the goal is philanthropy. Um, so Facebook reached out to me in winter of 21 for a reel that I created um, with Rihanna, and you'll see that. You started my video? But I thought I was on Fenty. We're not. We're not live with Fenty. We're just live? For nothing? What the fuck? So, this, uh, the real went viral. 
And that's the only reason they contacted me because it had like three point, I want to say 3.5 million views or what have you. And, you know, in bonus reels, you get paid for your content. So that was one video. And my first check, I think it was like 800 something dollars. And then I just kept on making reels, kept on making reels, kept on making reels. And then there was something on Instagram. It was like an ad on Instagram for Influence Me. I don't even remember. I remember filling it out, but I don't, I wasn't, it wasn't something that I was really concentrating on or like, oh, when are they going to contact me? Just, I did it and totally forgot about it. So, um, Influence Me contacted me, I want to say it was in February 22 when they contacted me and let me know that, that I was, um, contestant. So I started posting stuff about that. People were donating um, and vote. some people were voting free. Some people were donating because, yes, so people were donating to influence me because they were the charity that they were using for suicide prevention. And those, I already, ju I just mentioned that my brother had died by suicide. So of course that's near and dear to my heart. So I was like, yes, this is perfect. I'm going to get it. You know, because my brother, you know, everything that my business, my business is about suicide prevention and, and survivors of suicide loss and things of that sort. Close to home, right? So <laughs> I was doing that. Unfortunately, that flopped. But I had actually written a blog where I was talking about how God was working and the alignment of everything. And I said in there that if this was not for me, that this could open up other opportunities. I was not disheartened when I didn't make the cut for Influence Me. It was just like, uh, it was kind of embarrassing. I didn't mention it anymore. I didn't say anything about it. So here it is, guys. Yeah, they disqualified me and without explanation. And that's that I did not make it on to Influence Me. All right. Thereafter, I just kept creating content. Um, and then I actually made another reel with Tank when Tank beat Rolly's ass. Dig a hole, bury yourself, nigga. Uh, go ahead. Keep going. Uh, I, got, I got some nice dresses for you guys. Being cop. Um, and that went that went kind of, kind of viral, like in the millions as well with the views. Um, and that paid me as well. But then all of a sudden it seemed like Facebook shadow banned me, which is fine. That's fine. And my my funds were quite low. So I went from making it, my first check was like $800. My second check was like $4,000. And then it just started dwindling from there. December, 2022, I ended up getting a remote job was, which happened to be a dream job, which one of my children reminded me that it was my dream job to be able to work from home or the beach or wherever because I'm working remotely and I was still working with um, education. <clears throat> that contract was supposed to last until June. The con we've actually finished the work early and my job was over in February of 23. So now here I am, I gotta try to get something else. Now, again, all of this is, I'm walking blindly literally I'm just like like I told God God you know you got it you told me to quit my job this is what I'm doing and I'm expecting you to catch me because I'm I'm leaning on you so God continue to catch me catch me catch me catch me because that remote job just came out of the blue um and thank you to my friends that got me that job and then the then what happened then I got another job that I was not planning on getting, but I mean, my job ended in February. Something had to, something had to give. I, I needed to be able to make ends meet. Still not returning to education because that ain't it. However, <laughs> I um, applied for a job at a private school as a 
school aide and aftercare teacher, which was cool because I was just support. I wasn't teaching anybody. I wasn't doing lesson plans for nobody. I didn't have no, I didn't have to give no assessments. I wasn't going to be observed. All that trash that I hated, I didn't have to do. Started that job in March. That, that next week we went on spring break. When we come back from spring break, you know, the principal came to me and she was just like, so our first grade teacher quit. Can you teach first grade? Teach <laughs> and teach first grade? Hated first grade when I taught it. Hated it. I had my son's class. I hated teaching first grade. But me being the empath that I am, I could not let those kids have to learn a whole brand new person. So I was just like, sure, I'll do it. It's only like six to eight weeks. Fine, I'll teach the kids for six to eight weeks. So I taught the kids for six to eight weeks and it was cool, I had a good time. But that ain't it. For me, I was like, ugh, teaching, ugh. So they, this, the school, they loved me so much that they actually created a job for me. Isn't God good? So they created this amazing job for me with the title of academic, academic coordinator and auxiliary program director. Great, great, great. Looks gonna look great on my resume. I wasn't going to get paid through the summer, so I had to find another summer job, right? Another job for the summer to get me and my family through the summer. <laughs> um, but something within me was just like, nope. And you know when my soul say no, what happened, guys? I got to go. So turn that job down. I literally, I actually have to write my my letter of resignation or whatever you want to call it i guess it is resignation letter so that she can put that job up anyway so i'm not taking that job either because that's just not it for me um and there are some other things underlying that are for the reasons why i'm not going back but i'm not supposed to, this is what i'm supposed to do me creating my content is what i'm supposed to do I'm not supposed to be doing anything. I'm not supposed to work for anybody else but me and God. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I, I can't go against God's plan. God told me in 21, that in May 21, that it was time for me to go. Like, you're done. I told you I threw years and years of stuff away. And literally i was not gonna turn back i wasn't trying to be like lot's wife and turn around and look at that pillar of salt and turn but i kind of did didn't i but then again not really because here i am like i i know for a fact that this is what i'm supposed to do so anyway let me tell you about this alignment for how i got back home because i was not home um i actually moved out of my house let the kids have it because i was with i moved in with my ex in Baltimore and I want to say um, I was October the beginning of October some things were just out of line and I found out something and like God prompted me like God is funny the way God works and the way my angels work it's just like God don't play about me so in October, I was um, looking for one of my crystals. I am a rock lover. I know it's so anti-advent, but I was looking for my amethyst. And I had had it in the back pocket of a pair of my jeans, and I did not know where it was. I couldn't find my jeans, couldn't find my crystals. So I'm like, where's my stuff? So I was standing in, this, in, in, in the window, and like literally nobody else was home with me, and I feel this pull on my back pocket and I was like whoa like I didn't have I didn't have jeans on I had on leggings leggings don't have pockets and I felt this tug and I'm like yo what is that and then it hit me I was like oh my goodness my amethyst is in my in my right back pocket and it was literally the right back the right side where I felt the tug 
was like, okay, let me go, let me go see if it's in the laundry room. Go in the laundry room. Woo, there's my amethyst right in the right, right back pocket of my jeans. I was like, oh my goodness, great. So that was one day. Then like, and it might have been that night. I don't even know. So anyway, um, that happened. So I found my amethyst. And then the next day or some days after that, I was standing in the window again and like just my ex was in the living room knocked out sleep and I'm standing in the window and someone's like go look through his phone and I'm like why am I gonna look through his phone like I don't care what's in his phone like been there done that I've seen stuff in his phone before I'm not looking through the man's phone because it was something that I vowed to myself that I would not do again so to hear this this voice telling me to go look through this man's phone, I'm just like, dude, like, I don't wanna. Because I know what happens when you go and you search for things, but it wasn't something that I'm telling myself. Like, where did this come from? It just, just out of the blue, go look in his phone. Like, I don't even remember if anything was going on for, for me to be like, oh, I need to go look through his phone. So I'm like fighting against God, fighting against my angels, whoever it was. And I was just like, I don't want to go through this one. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. And now that I'm thinking of it, it's like, if he's what? You didn't want to go look through a nigga phone? What? So it took the Holy Spirit, my angel, whoever, a couple of times of saying, go look through so I was literally fighting like oh no get off me I don't want to go look through his phone so finally I was just like okay whatever like because you're not gonna shut up until I go look through this man's phone so I go and I go to his phone and I scroll and I push I just it was like the first thing that I pushed and it was like something just that should not be in your phone when you're involved with somebody, which is a little odd, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, you know, but people can send you messages and you respond or you don't, whatever. It's all in how you handle it. So I don't think when I opened it, I don't recall, I don't recall seeing a response from him. But the first thing, it was just like, eh. and then it was another message after that, that was like, hmm. Something about this ain't right. So I was just like, okay, cool. I started packing up my stuff. I was just like, oh, this nigga, this nigga is ser not serious about me. So it's time for me to just pack up. And I just started packing up my things. I'm being honest to him. He couldn't tell, really, because it's just, you just couldn't tell. So then a couple days after that, I receive a phone call from my daughter. She's like, mommy, oh my gosh, mortgage is so expensive. I'm not gonna be able to afford it this month. I was like, eh, what? Thank God, I think the beginning of September, cause this was October, the beginning of September, I had just gotten back my tax refund from 2021. Right? And it was a nice lump sum. Like they owed me, owed me some money, right? So when she hit me up, I was just like, okay, cool. I'm coming on. I got you. No worries. Because I don't ever want my kids to have to worry about anything. That's why they still live at home. Because I'm not kicking you out because you're 18. Like it's expensive out there. So um, she, she hit me up. I let her know. I was just like, all right, I'm coming home. Two days after that, it was October 15th, I remember the day. It was a marathon in Baltimore and the ex wakes up and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to work. I was just like, oh, you going to work? I was like, oh, you're going to work? Why didn't you tell me? Just gave me the opportunity to get my ass up, get my shit together and get the fuck up out of there. And that's exactly what I did. So the alignment. The blind faith, the listening, paying attention, being tuned in. If I had not been tuned in, if I had not exercised blind faith, literally, I'm blind. Like, yeah, there's faith. You have faith that like you trust. But I'm literally going in blind. I'm leaving stuff behind. Just like, $20,000. Oh, yeah. Throwing stuff away. 
knowing that I'm not coming back to this. God, I just know God's got me. Okay, I kind of lost my train of thought. But um, anyway, so he went to work and I was able to, like, the marathon was to start at 8 o'clock. And once the marathon started, like, Baltimore locked down, I wouldn't have been able to get out. As God would have it, I told you guys that I had already started packing up my stuff. So, so it was easy for me to just grab my things and put them in my car and get out. It took me like an hour and a half or so to move all of my things and get out of there. And I made it out. Um, there was, you know, there was a little traffic or whatnot, you know, a little crazy getting out of there. But God worked it out and I was able to get out and I was just so relieved. I was so happy, like, oh. I'm gonna get back to civilization where there's trees and there's like deer and grass and sidewalks that don't have poop on them. Yeah, it was amazing. So it was great to be back home. Um, so here I am still standing in my blind faith and allowing God to lead me every step of the way, literally every step of the way can't do it without him so i'm still unemployed i'm still working on getting clients for building my my business um and just here i am blind but i know that god's got me i know even even with the fact that here I am. I wasn't I wasn't able to pay my mortgage again this month and I'm not scared. I'm doing everything that I need to do. I've talked to I've talked to the mortgage company. I'm working with um Maryland, the program in Maryland that they have for homeowners, homeowners assistance, um, the homeowners assistance fund, which is not easy to get it. They make it difficult. Um and I'm still job searching. Even though I know that that's not what's for me, I'm still doing it just in case. You know what I'm saying? Just, but I'm gonna continue to ride for my business. I'm still gonna continue to ride for God because there have been quite a few years where I have not. Um, and I kind of push God to the wayside Really, I pushed religion to the wayside, but that's another, that's another uh, video. But yeah, we got to be blind in our faith. We have to truly trust, like, because I don't think we really trust God. Like, how many of us are comfortable doing what I did? Just here, God, take it. And I know that you're going to, you're going to catch me every step of the way. That's scary. And I've, I've talked to several people and let them know what I'm doing. And I'm like, they're like, well, how did you do it? How did you survive? I was like, oh, God, because I ain't had no savings. I ain't never had no savings. I've always lived paycheck to paycheck. Now I'm living blessing to blessing. <laughs> it's not even paycheck to paycheck. And God stays blessing me. I don't worry for nothing. Like, and it sounds weird, like, it's a scary place to be in, but it's also so peaceful. I literally don't worry about anything. Like I'm at, I'm, I'm, I'm literally at risk of losing my house at this point. My car is trash. My car sounds like it's about to fall apart while I'm driving on the road. And I'm still driving it because I know God's got me and he's gonna get me from point A to point B. Because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, right? I'm walking blind in my faith. I got blinders on. I'm going, God, you have to lead me. You know, it's like a trust fall. How many of us could actually do a trust fall these days? That's what I'm doing. It is my trust fall. God, I trust you. I believe in you. I believe in us. We got this. But it, I'm, I only got this because I know that you're catching me. I'm talking to God right now. And I want you guys to understand it is important 
to truly trust God, to truly just fall into his arms. It's scary. That feeling, you know that feeling when you do do a trust fall and it's like, is that person actually going to be falling back? Is that person actually going to catch me? Is that are they actually going to catch me? And then you, you resting in their arms. That's God. And can't nobody catch you like God. All right. I may have missed a couple of things because there was a lot of stuff that I mentioned in the other video that I did that I know I didn't mention here, but I rambled too much, so I had to cut that out. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, comments, or whatever, please leave them down below. I will try to answer them for you. I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I hope you learned something today. And remember to just trust God and walk blind in your faith. Don't be afraid. It's scary, but it's kind of exciting. Exciting. I'm a little weird though. Someone's like, you're really a risk taker. I am. I was placed on this earth to be a risk taker. I was placed on this earth to do whatever it is that God has for me to do. And I hope that I am serving him and I hope that serving him well and making him proud. All right, that's it. I got plenty more stories for you coming. All right, bye. So this, yeah, this is this is a walk, a journey with feasts on, um, yeah. <laughs> like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later, man. And please believe everything that I'm, I'm talking about is it, everything's not always going to be religious. It's not, and this isn't even religious. This is not going to be God centered. I'm not going to say religious because I'm not religious. So everything is not going to be God centered. Um, may, um, I might lie, that might be a lie. God focus, centered. I don't know, who knows? I'm gonna throw God up in there. Panera, sponsor me.